OK, I think it started. Um, so yeah, this is sort of a um, 45 minute session. It's kind of fast paced. We're trying to um, do the basics. What we actually won't do, let me just start with that, is I'm not going to teach you anything about coding, actually, <laughs> in a way that maybe sounds ironic but or, or, uh, or paradoxical. But um, the point is that I think what's possible with ChatGPT is to code without being able to code. And that's really what the session is. And so the, the thing to keep in mind with that is you will see code, you will look at code, <laughs> but you don't need to understand what it is or what it does. OK, that's kind of the trick, I think, with doing this. Um, and if you want to, if you say this is really cool, I want to keep using this for whatever my projects, then um, you may find over time you will learn the code because <laughs> you will try to do things and then you'll have a discussion with ChatGPT and it will over time explain to you what different things do and how they work. And so it, I can, I think of it like as a metaphor. It's like if you move to a country without understanding the language and you don't go to any language courses and nobody like explicitly teaches you the language, you will still learn the language. And that's exactly how this will work without having to learn explicitly. Um, uh, yes, T, you're welcome to invite anyone and um, to join us. Yeah. Um, without having to yeah explicitly learn how to code, you will learn how to code by doing it with ChatGPT as a uh, collaborator. And that's kind of really what, what we're trying to do here. So um, I have some goals for the session. The, the first one is to create a running piece of software from, from scratch. <laughs> so that's sort of maybe quite an ambitious goal, but it's actually totally achievable. Uh, and I will show you how. <laughs> um, and the second part of that is to make something that's useful or interesting in some way. So it, it, it's easy, you know, you can get ChatGPT to write a one line program that maybe isn't very useful, and I will show you something like that in a second. But um, to make something useful takes a little bit more thought, and we're going to look at how we could, might do that as well. And then we want to have a bit of fun as well, so we're, we're going to try and, and make something that, that lets us have fun while we're doing this as well. And so I have a question here, which is, is there something specific that you would like to learn? So is there something that um, you've thought of? Uh, hmm, somebody said I could do this with a bit of code, but I don't know how to code, so I didn't think about it. But now maybe I would be able to do that kind of thing. Is there anything like that that might come to mind for either of you? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm always interested in coding and, and so on, but always have the excuse of being too busy to learn it. So mm -hmm. really, thank, um, thank you so much for offering the session. Yeah. And, and, and is there something specific you would like to learn, like a specific task you've thought about that you would like to apply code to? I actually learned um, how to code um, from my partner, um, but like very simple Python code, converting um, Excel to XML because um, mm. we published this interactive map that um, in order to update the data on the map, we would need um, to basically converting data in the Excel form to XML and then upload it to the map. So that's all I coded or learned how to code. Okay. And um, But yeah, it would be great for me to learn coding in terms of data analysis, like to see yeah. how I can analyze some data effectively. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to look at that for sure. Mm -hmm. OK, I don't know if that would be feasible, but for me, I was more thinking like websites. Like, can you like, a, for example, an online education website or something like that? Yes, that's also very feasible. Um, I haven't got a plan to do that, um, but maybe we'll we'll spend a second to do it. Um, coding websites is actually yeah relatively straightforward. Oh. Uh, I think the reason why, like, I haven't thought of it as being a, a use case here is because there's already a lot of other tools to make websites without coding, like Squarespace or Wix, or there's a lot of platforms out there. And so it's something that most people nowadays actually don't use code for, <laughs> even though, yeah, you could program a website. Yeah. But but I, we, we could look at how, how you might do that, or especially like if there's a, a specific use case, a specific reason why you might not want to use one of these platforms, Wix or Square, Squarespace. There might, there's reasons. I mean, obviously, also if you, it's it's lower cost to 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 make your website, and you would. But the problem is, you would still need to pay for a host. Um, but there is also good hosts out there that are much cheaper than Squarespace, so that is an option. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Two two interesting data analysis that's in the program and websites we could we could look at briefly. Um, and so let me just come to the learning outcome for the session, which is just to gain the ability to code collaboratively with an LLM. So LLM is the type of software. It's a large language model that ChatGPT is. And 
um, it's it, this you know this approach works with any LLM, also with Bing Chat, for example, um, or with Copilot from GitHub. But um, yeah, that's that's our goal to code collaboratively. And um, one of the sub the goals of that is um, being able to get it or get, getting a feeling for the kinds of things that you can do this way, because um, this is not going to make you a um, uh, experienced software engineer, but that's not the goal. And um, software engineers can do certain things with uh, computer code that we will not be able to learn how to do it with this. But um, hopefully you will be able to get a sense of what kinds of problems you might be able to approach with this chat GPT coding um, method. So, so um, well, you know, first of all, you might ask, well, can, can chat GPT actually write running code at all? And um, you can you can try this yourself, but you know I've tried it for you. <laughs> you can say something like, "Write me some simple code to demonstrate your code writing abilities," and ChatGPT will say, "Certainly, here's a simple Python code that uh, calculates the sum of the numbers from one to ten, and then it writes some code." And I say, "Okay, that's fair enough. I don't need to understand what that code does. I can just run it. I will press the button, copy code, put it in VS Code." Um, and I will um, show you how to use Replit instead of RIM, uh, if you, because you, I think you haven't installed VS Code, and Replit is a much easier way to do this. But um, anyway, I put it in and I run it, and at the bottom here it gives me the result, which is 55. And so, um, well, I had to think for myself: is that the right answer? Um, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all summed together equals 55, um, and that's in, in fact what it did. And so. Um, that's all there is, there is to it, really. I mean, I could read this and say, well, why is there this 11 here? It's 1 to 10. Well, that has to do with the way that this program works, but it actually just doesn't matter. <laughs> um, um, you can just take the code and run it, and it will tend to work. Um, but that is kind of an important thing. Uh, generally, if you can't read the code, you should be able to at least double check the output to see if it's correct. So that's why I said to myself, I'm going to go into a calculator and check, is this 55 actually the correct answer to this question? of what the numbers from 1 to 10 add up to. Um, but that's it. That's sort of just to say, yes, ChatGPT can write code. <laughs> and um, OK, this is a useless example. I, I can use a calculator for this. This is not what a ChatGPT is useful for. But um, can we do something more complicated? Can we get it to code a game for us? Can we get it to do some data analysis for us? Can we get it to write a PowerPoint macro, for example? Um, and the answer to all of three of those is yes. <laughs> and um, I'm going to show you the first two. So let me just um, pull in my ChatGPT window here. And um, so actually, I, I will maybe take this chance to ask you, do you, either of you have ChatGPT Plus? No, OK, that's fine. So um, ChatGPT Plus uh, just gives you the chance to run GPT-4 as well. Um, and normally, without it, you just run ChatGPT 3.5, which is the original version. Um, um, now, sorry, how much yes. are you paying to get the ChatGPT Plus? It's 20 bucks a month. OK. And this is individual and not um, corporate or organization um, pricing, That's right? individual, yes. And they, they have just announced that they're doing corporate pricing, but I guess it will be much more expensive. So ChatGPT yes. Plus is still the main way to get access to the premium features. Um, and um, just for demonstration, I, I will use GPT 3.5 actually because it's it, it's faster, even still for me, much faster than GPT 4. So I can write something like, um, write me a simple version of tic-tac-toe using, and in this case, I'm just going to tell it what to use so that it will give me the right answer quicker. But you could also ask it generally and it will make some kind of solution for you. But I know that Pygame is, a, is this module in Python that's very good for making games, and so I'm going to tell it to use that. Um, and it will start spitting out the code for this game. Um, and I've done this now, you know, maybe 10 times to test <laughs> different versions of, of that uh, thing. And one thing to note here is it's relatively important how you write this, um, this uh, request. Um, and also, just there's kind of a lot of randomness in it. So this version of the game will be quite different to the other ten versions that I've not. We're not. Well, the, I, I should correct myself. Not quite different. It's a little bit. It's a little bit different. Tiny bit different. Um, and some of them work, and some of them don't. And um, so we're going to be just let ourselves be surprised of whether this works or not. Um, and I'm going to open my Visual Studio Code and create a new. Hold on. I have to share the screen. 
it's, um, it's my Visual Studio code screen. And in here, I'm going to paste the code um, just the way it came from ChatGPT. Now press run, and we'll see if something happens. No, it doesn't, doesn't seem to work. Or did it open in a different window somewhere? Oh, yeah, I have something else open. Just there we go. OK, so you can all you can see that, right? This little tic tac toe window with the, the three three by three cell grid. Yes. And now I can play <laughs> tic tac toe against myself. Um, player O wins. OK, so that seems to work. Uh, and um, uh, to restart the game, I have to restart the program. But uh, yes, it's a it's a fully functional version of tic tac toe. Um, and so that that was on the first try, right? So like, I didn't have to go back and forth. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit, um, but typically with very simple games like this, what I found is on the first try it will get a, a working a working game. And that's what we'll be doing today as well. That's what you you'll be doing as well. So that's um, a game. Okay. So can ChatGPT do, do some data analysis for us as well? So let's try that. Um, I am going to go back to ChatGPT, oh, and now this is a feature that is an, a plus premium feature, so you won't be able to do this today. But um, in when I use ChatGPT four, I have the option to choose this data advanced data analysis option, and that um, makes one uh, well two differences. One is I can upload files, so I can take um, I downloaded some some open government data from the Swiss government. Um, if I can find it. Oh, I've downloaded a lot of things recently. Um, is that gone? Here we go. This one. Um, and um, the other thing that th this does now is it's, uh, I can just ask things like, what's in this file? <laughs> um, and what it can do is it can um actually run code so it will write code to read the file and then it will execute that code um, in order to read the file and so you can see how it's working it's writing some code the same way that it wrote the game code that we put in um but then unlike with the game it's now immediately actually also executing this code um and uh, yeah, there's some error messages and so on but um uh, it, it even will try to like understand. OK, so it, it, it reads the error messages and then it says, let me let me see if I can fix this problem. <laughs> so it automatically tries to solve um, its own problem. And in fact, it has done that here. OK. Um, and so it, it, it's kind of this. It, it's quite quite very, very impressive to me. I mean, it's again, now it's gone. OK, this is actually not a comma separated file, which is what CSV stands for. This is actually semicolon separated. So let me go and convert it into semicolon separated. Um, and it again, processes the file. And now I have these nicely formatted columns of what is in this data. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Took me so many different steps to just turn it from semicolon to colon, like by uploading on Google Drive and so on. And then here, it's just doing yeah. everything by itself. And exactly. And and in fact, you can I can download this data now. So uh, let me download this converted uh, as comma separated. That's good to know. <laughs> um, and it will, it, it, yeah, so it will give me a link um, with this file. Can the other, the 3.5 version also convert it from semicolon no. to comma? Only the but plus not, one. This, okay. is, this is only in this advanced data analysis module. Yeah. So, but I can download this. I'll, uh, yeah, just. And it's saved that file now on my computer and I have the converted file. But there's something else which I can do, which is I can actually do data analysis here. So I can say, um, make me a chart of this column, the number of deaths. Um, by date and age. Um, and again, it will start to write the code. It will think to itself. I mean, think it's a, I'm very anthropomorphizing it, but the model is coming up with some code and um, and then it executes that code immediately. Um, and again, we don't need to understand what this code does. We can check for ourselves 
in Excel, for example, to see if that chart is actually correct if we want to. Um, but um, and, and again, it, it will make mistakes. There will be certain things that maybe don't work. Um, um, typically, it will either try to correct its own mistake or it will ask you how you might want to proceed. Um, and then usually it will give you a suggestion. It will say, do you want to try um, getting rid of the um, missing data, for example? And then you can just say yes, and it will keep going. <laughs> um, uh, in this case, it's just keep, it keeps going by itself. Um, and hopefully at the end, we'll get a chart out of this, um, which is what I want. Now it's producing the chart, let's see. Taking longer than expected. There it is. OK, <laughs> OK, this is not good. <laughs> um, so, so it didn't work. Um, and the problem is um, it can't see the chart, so it doesn't know that this is messed up. <laughs> OK, so it's like, here's the chart. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> and you're like, no, this is terrible. <laughs> but um, that's not its problem. So but I, I have made some charts that have worked um, a lot of different ones, actually. Um, for example, um, there is one actually in the slideshow that I can just, just show you, which is here. That's the chart. Actually, the chart that I asked for would be exactly this one at the bottom here. It's the deaths by week. This is uh, across all of Switzerland, the number of people who die every week. Um, and uh, in two age categories, 0 to 64 at the bottom here and 65 plus. Um, and you can see in, when was this? January 2021 uh, here. Uh, there was this big peak because of, uh, I guess there was December 2020, that was a corona peak. Um, so it's uh, yeah, quite interesting to be able to see that here. Um, so, okay, but just back to what can uh, ChatGPT do? Um, so, I have a question on that yeah. chart. Why would the other one not work? Is it because of the missing data or I guess ChatGPT couldn't see the chat itself, so it wouldn't be able to give you the explanation why? Yeah, I, th I think it's because of the. I think it's because of the data structure, the. Um, the it used, let me just see here, it used the. Trying to see where. Um, what which date it used because there's a lot of dates in this in this file. Uh, you can see here that there's the the year and the week mm -hmm. and the ending date of the week. And so because there's these three different time periods, um, if it didn't combine these correctly, it it that's probably what happened. So um, within each year, the line that the order of the weeks are messed up. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> um, so I guess that's what would happen. So um, probably if, I, if if so that you know that I have to figure out myself, and then I could say to it um, use the, I guess it should use the end date. Um, um, use the end date to order this, and then hopefully that would that would fix the problem. Um, Um, but yeah, but I don't want to spend like too much more time on this. So, um, uh, I, because I want to get to the point where you get to work on something. So, um, basically, uh, I'd like you to spend the next sort of 15 minutes or so um, trying to um, make something for yourself. And so you can either try to make a simple game or um, try to make a PowerPoint macro um, but I haven't shown that actually. I, I, I just I didn't show this because yesterday when I tried to show this, my PowerPoint crashed. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, that doesn't work when I'm trying to present <laughs> with PowerPoint. Um, so let me see. Yeah, I think I think maybe I think maybe the the right approach will be for both of you to try making a game, because um, that's kind of a nice complex but fully like from start to finish, it's one program, um, and that that makes that makes quite an interesting challenge. So um, pick a game like Pong, Snake. Um, space race. Uh, I have a link here for more. I'll put this link in the chat actually. 
um, you can you can pick a, a game from the top of this list, preferably. Um, Minesweeper actually is a good one I found. Um, 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 otherwise, there's like memory puzzles could work. Um, a maze would be probably a good one. Uh, actually, a maze might be difficult. I don't know if we'll figure out a maze. <laughs> um, so, so the, the 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 limitations. Let me just define the limitations. I'll, I'll put this link in the chat, and you can open that and, and take a look at what some games might be. Um, but the limitations include one that you can't. Um, in the short, short time that we have, we won't be able to use kind of any images in the game. So a game like Memory, for example, where you want to have pictures that you know you flip up and see whether they match, that might be hard to implement because you would have to go find the images. And so that you know probably is is, is, is not something we can do in a quick re really quickly. Um, the same is true, yeah, of any kind of game that uses some kind of uh, textures that might not be able to be computer generated very easily. So like we we could make a Mario style game. Um, but then Mario would be just a circle, for example, <laughs> and um, so but that but that could be actually a fun exercise as well. So um, and the same is true for like um, Space Invaders or something like that. I think Space Invaders is a little bit too complicated actually for it to do and it was to make in 15 minutes with ChatGPT. But something like Breakout that would that's a really good option anyway. Like the paddle is like a, you know a rectangle and you have all these rectangles above and you have to have to hit them with a ball like. There's only shapes, so that's quite easy to do. The same with snake. You know, you have a, a line and it moves around trying to eat the apple, so you only have uh, squares. Um, Space race is is a similar game. That's like where there's like asteroids falling, and you have to like try and not let them hit you. You could also consider the opposite, like a catch game. Like there's things falling, like apples falling from a tree, and you have to try and catch them. That's a very a simple game that could work. Um, and Pong, of course, where you have paddles and there's a ball flying between like a digital tennis. That would be pretty, pretty straightforward as well. Yeah, so I would say pick pick one of those and then uh, go and try and, and do it. So open your chat GPT, ask chat GPT to generate the game for you. And uh, T, you have Python installed, so you can copy it straight away and run it. Um, and Rim, because you don't have, I don't think you have Python installed. So um, what, what I'll get you to do is use Replit. So I'll, I'll post that as well. Um, that's a website that allows you to run Python online. So um, you just go to replit.com, create an account, and then um, um, maybe I've written it here. You create a, a, Py a Replit account, and then you create this thing called a REPL using this Pygame template, and then you'll be able to post the paste the code in there. Um, is Thank that correct? Yeah, thank you. I'm actually installing Python. It's just taking a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why. I, time to get that's why I, okay, um, that's why I, I, sure. I'll, I'll try it on Replit first. Just I think it's yeah. the same kind, so yeah, I can. It should, work, it should work perfectly fine on Replit. Um, the the thing that I've noticed with Replit is sometimes the game starts going a bit slow because it's you know, it doesn't give you very much computing power because mm -hmm. it's free service. But so if you run on a computer later, you will notice that the game works much more smoothly. Okay. But you'll at least be able to tell if it works or not at all <laughs> using Replit. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll I'll leave this line up here. This is basically just kind of my, some ideas about how to approach it. You know, pick the game, ask it to be decoded, see if it works. If it doesn't, um, you know, either start with a different game that maybe is simpler, or ask Chat to be to plan out the game first, um, tell it you how it's going to do it, and then ask it to do it. That helps to structure it a bit better sometimes. Um, or try to simplify the game even further. Like you can try even doing something like that's not really a game yet, but just say like make it put a pixel on a screen that I can move with the arrow keys on my keyboard and see if it can do that at least. Uh, so yeah, we have now like 10 to 15 minutes to try that out. Um, for those who have not yet coded with Python, maybe I think it would be helpful to go step by step on how you can actually copy and paste the code in Python, even like they already installed the Python um, locally, for example. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to share your screen maybe, and then and then um, you can show it, <laughs> and then I can guide you through it. <laughs> um, sure, because I haven't used this, I think, in two years now, so I yeah. forgot a lot. Um, let me see where I can share so my you screen. Need, 
Oh yeah, no, so you you're sharing your screen, so I think I can't, right? Um, you sh you should be able able to. Uh, it might be disallowed, but if you see the share button at the top right, ah, uh, it's disabled. Ah, okay. It's okay. Let me see if I can enable it. Meeting options. Who can present? Everyone. Save. OK, now you should be able to share. So you see my screen, right? Yes. Perfect. OK, this is my Python and I think I copy um, the code before um, mm -hmm. with. So using a PyCharm, um, which is perfectly fine. Um, that's the the development environment. And so what you'll need to do here at some point is like, I, um, is this a f new project that you have? Yeah, I created yeah, so, a new project. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So you can just um, uh, create a new like file. I guess you could also use the scratch files. Doesn't really matter. But you you just want a .py file where you're going to paste the code. Um, you could say scratch file. Let's do that. New, new scratch, scratch file. file. Okay. And then and which one? It's going to be yep. Python. So you type in Python. Uh, hold on, what's this? No, this is something else. <laughs> Sorry, I see. This is an uh, yeah. Ah, this is my old one. Ah, I see. So. No, 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 not from selected window. Yeah, it should be Python. Uh, yeah, you can. I think you should be able to use the scratch.py. That should work. Can you open that? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so you can paste the code in there and run it from there. Oh, that is right. It's really slow for my computer right now. <laughs> yeah, probably especially when you're sharing, it goes slower as well. Yeah. Um, then I stop sharing and then I'll try yeah. it out. Rem, how's it working for you? Have you got uh, into Replit? So you, you've generated some code, uh, have you, T, with ChatGPT? Oh, you're on mute. Can't hear you. My computer is freezing at the moment, so just a second. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Hi, back. <laughs> does it, does it, uh, did Ripple it work for you? Um, I'll share my screen later. No, because I have a, it. It I asked it to run a, the code that was generated by ChatGPT, mm -hmm. but I think it it does not. It didn't want to. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Why don't you share your screen and we'll we'll see what what we can do. Oh wow. Um. And, and then. Uh, oh. I. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, um, I'll, I'll just share with you my screen and then you can tell me. So, um, can share screen share. Oh, to share screen. Yes. Can, okay, can you share the screen? Can you see it? Can you see my screen? Nope. It's loading now, yeah. Okay. Yes, now I can see it. Oh, okay. So this is what I... Okay, yeah, perfect. So this is typical. You you generate some code, you put it in, it says error. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's... The first approach would be um, copy the last line of this error message. Okay. Yeah, and just um, just respond with that. And ask ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah. You could you don't even need to make a comment just just copy the, the error message and um
I tried the snack game, but it didn't run. It say um, running equals false, so maybe the card didn't work. Um. <laughs> okay, yeah, just try 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 as well. Just copy the error message and give it to ChatGPT and see if it can fix it. Just based on that, so that's that often works. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ren. Hi, Pac. It kicked me out. It just yeah, yeah. Out. I got the impression something didn't stop it's, working. Yeah, I think my computer was like, okay, this is too much. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll show it. So, so, can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Can you see my screen? Um, <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, of course. Um, I don't know. Why is it so complicated? Why yeah. am I so complicated to share anything? Okay. Hopefully now you can see it. No. <laughs> ah, so far yeah. needs permission. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, now I can see it. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So copy and then go back on ChatGPT. One of them is going to work. Yes, this one. It was the last one. That was the... uh, no, no, the the green one. It's the green one. Okay, thank you. Ah, oh, yes, it's here. So, and I tell it that there was a an error, right? Yeah. What What did you do above? Because there, it looks like you already. Yes. Oh, you I, already asked for the error. Yeah, yeah. I, I I told it there is an error with the code, and then I wrote, but then even this one didn't work. Oh, I see. Okay. Um. Yeah, in that case, it, it looks like it was probably the, it looks like the same error. 
Um, so in that case, I couldn't figure it out. So um, I'll ask I, for another game, maybe. Yeah, I, I would, like, let's try again for mine. But I, I would call it mine sweeper. I wonder if um, mine okay. field. It might not understand what that is. So, but I would just um, I would open a new window because usually, uh, oh. like a chat on the top left. Because if if it's um, like not working, mm -hmm. um, it will tend to like repeat its own errors. So then usually okay. I'm like, okay, you don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna delete you and start with a fresh chat GPT. <laughs> okay. And that that helps a lot. So yeah. So in this new one, you can ask. They try asking for Minesweeper. Okay. Create a version of. Generate the code for. Minesweeper. In this case, um, did you mention on the other one also using Pygame? I would I would mention that. Oh. Uh, how? Spell P Y G A M E exactly. Yeah. Using Pygame. Okay. I I asked using Python, not Pygame. Yeah, the Pygame is a module in Python, um, okay. and I, Pygame um, makes making games easier. And when it's easier, it's more likely to get it correct. So <laughs> I don't know what it was using. The other one, actually, you could see at the very top of the code, you can see it says import something. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, this version, it'll say import Pygame. Um, okay. And um, that means it's using this module. Uh, I don't know what it was doing in the other way. It might have been using Pygame as well. but. Okay, this code oh. creates my sweeper game using Pygame. You can click. Okay, and I'll probably just copy code, right? Mm -hmm. Should I copy this first one? No, or? that's not necessary. Okay. Um, uh, Replit would automatically install anything you need to install. <laughs> okay, and then new one here as well. You can just replace that. So you can just uh, select all, Control A, and. Um, Sure. Why did it not? Okay. Didn't get copied. Um, try okay. going back to the ChatGPT site and pressing yeah. button again. Copy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Run. Right. Yes. Da, 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 da. Ah, so, yeah. So it wasn't using Pygame. Now it's now it's saying, "Oh, you you want Pygame? I need to install it." <laughs> so it's going to install it now. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, okay. So this is exactly so. This is the problem with using um, Replit as well. Is that it's like it it will keep running, but it will um it will just take a little bit uh, of a moment. Um, okay. Then okay. You can so try it with this as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Shall I just copy paste, or should I do the um, pie game here as well? Yeah, not he, not here, but if you go to, on the top left to the two documents that are over um, here, um, uh, further to the left, there's this bar, and then slightly down, oop, uh -oh. it's on the yeah there. Yeah. There's two mm -hmm. documents that yeah exactly that's the explorer. So if you go in there, and okay. then you have that game.py exactly. So you can open that, and in here that's where you paste the the code. Yeah. All right, yay! And you press the the play button on the top right. That's the that's the run button. Okay. Hopefully this one will. Oh, it worked! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So, I have to try click somewhere and see if that works. <laughs> oh, you hit a mine. Oh, yeah. that's funny. So, <laughs> yeah. So close it and restart it. It it looks like it tells you where the mines are. <laughs> <laughs> So try hitting one of the white squares. Doesn't work. It doesn't look like it works, huh? And if you click one of the gray squares again, uh. bam, it's okay. It's a it's an only lose version of Minesweeper. You can only lose. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, so so I don't know what it was thinking, but this is yeah. So you can you can I guess. Since it works, at least that's a good start. So you can go back into ChatGPT and say, yeah. "Hey, it seems like I can't select any squares. Um, uh, um, can you fix that?" And and it'll try and, and correct it. So at least it works. So that's the you no, know, but it, it works. <laughs> at least it works something. You can click cells to reveal them. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't click cells. You can write that. Click. Clicks. 
uh, cells. Yeah. Okay. Uh, only only the mines, maybe, right? That is why. Uh, um, can, can you fix that? Yeah. I love how polite it is. It's like, <laughs> I apologize for oversight. <laughs> <laughs> We were really sorry for the, for the inconvenience. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Okay. Um, so now once it generates this, should I copy paste again in? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. And, and some, you, you, sometimes you have to read a bit carefully because sometimes uh, it's happened to me. I've copied and replaced everything and then it didn't work. I read more carefully and said, oh, you should keep this part and just replace the rest. <laughs> So sometimes you have to read a bit what it says, but um, okay, it's it's I mean it's very intelligent. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, uh, I was thinking uh, the, like here the debug console. I was like, okay, maybe this is the one for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, you just uh, put the no, up there the end. <laughs> Do your uh, bit, human. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all right. Uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like it's rewritten everything, right? Um, yeah, I think. OK, well, let's copy code. I'll just replace it and then if it doesn't work, well, we'll do it again. Um, control da -da -da -da. Can I? <laughs> it's fun. OK, well, yeah, so 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 yeah, so there's a recursion error, so um, now this is the part again. You can copy that uh, error message at the very bottom, recursion error, and and give that. I think that's that's a fairly that should be fairly solvable. Um, oh, okay. So this is this is the approach, right? You you got it to do something. If it gets an error, you give it the error. <laughs> like okay. it's. Uh, there's there's an error. I apologize. See, it's, it's apologizing. How can I be mad at it? <laughs> okay, let's try. I'm going to try this one last time. I don't know if T has been able to have <laughs> been able to generate. Um, I'm something. playing the game. <laughs> You're playing the game for me. <laughs> the thing is, um, but it took me such a t such a like it, it's not straightforward to install Pygame because mm -hmm. when I asked um ChatGPT to write me the code first, it suggested that I should install Pygame. Yes. Pygame, and then um, I'm using Mark, so this is really a hassle. So it will be good, perhaps, um, if you could walk the students through how to install it, um, if they don't have any prior. Yeah, it's it's in the experience. preparation instructions, so. Um, the I, hopefully people have installed it by the time they get to the class. But ah, okay. Um, the th yeah. Also, I, I think you're using um, yeah, you're using PyCharm. So oh, you got it installed. Uh, yeah. How did you install it? By by, I'm curious. How did you get that working? Um, out? my partner just sitting there, so I asked him to install it quickly for ah, me. Okay. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a developer, so. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it should. Be it should be normally like you you go to the terminal and you type pip install pygame and that should work but but I, I don't know how it works in pycharm exactly so yeah i think he 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 looked he opened terminal and then did some copy paste oh. from the internet <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's um yeah that's a sort of a tricky part to get started to install pygame on on the computer but uh, rim you also figured it out right how did yeah, you do yeah. The video helped me, to be honest. Yeah. The yeah. the video was very helpful. Sometimes I got confused, but the video was very helpful. So like, okay, so I'm clicking here and I'm doing this. I was yeah. Okay, perfect. Um. Okay, so uh, T, maybe you can tell us how did the, how did you get the snake for, for working? That looks like a really nice version of snake, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just um asked ChatGPT to write a simple code for the snake game. Mm -hmm. so. And it worked on the first try. Yeah. Yeah, after wow. I after we installed the um, Pi game, yes. OK, um, mm -hmm. so uh, is there, uh, does the game end when you hit the wall? It does, it did. <laughs> OK, and if you uh, hit yourself, does it end as well? 
Oh, that I didn't try yet. <laughs> so. And then is there a score uh, somewhere on the screen? I don't think I saw it. I guess not. No, I don't see it. Did so, you so see my, my screen though before? Uh, not anymore. I saw it before. Oh, OK. No, there's no score, but I could see how long the snake could get. Yeah, yeah, that's so perhaps, great. Yeah, so perhaps we could ask um, Chattivity to write it to include a score, right? Exactly. And then, especially, like maybe especially just also if the game ends, right? There could be like a game over screen and then it could be like score 12 or whatever. And then um, so those kinds of things, those kinds of kind of improvements you can do in the same chat interface. So you can say to it, OK, this works. Now I want you to add. Um, now I want you to add the score and it will try to do that. And um, and you can get quite far with that. I, I, I think you can't you won't be able to make. You know, a very complicated game like this, but you'll be able to incrementally add a couple of extra features onto a simple game like this, and that works quite well. Cool. We'll try it out. All right. Well, thank you so much for this. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Josh. Unfortunately, I cannot see you anymore. <laughs> My computer seems to crash. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what, what I would do, I think there's, um, uh, in, in closing, I will just ask, um, just so you know you've, you've 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 seen what it can do and my question is kind of um do you do you think that will be useful for you in the future do you think you will use something like this to do something <laughs> um or or is this kind of like okay it's kind of a fun it's a gag maybe i could show people and it would be you know people will be maybe impressed but it's not something i would find you know useful to i don't know a work or something like that. we'll be curious if you can think of a or if you, if you see an immediate use case for yourself. Um, I'll go first because I need to leave for another meeting soon, if that's fine. Yeah, mm, of course. Ah, thanks. So, so far, I think the most useful for me is the data analysis part, but that requires the plus one. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the moment, by the look at it, I think it's faster for me just to create these uh, graphs and charts um, in Excel myself, yeah. um, rather than trying to understand uh, what didn't work and why couldn't ChatGPT create these <laughs> um, charts. But like as it would improve, I think I would definitely use it for such things um, after I have validated it that, you know, the that I do the same in Excel and it has the same correct graphs. I think that that I would definitely use. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the the maybe just to to see what I tell you what I see as the for the advanced uh, data analysis. I think the use case of it is if you want to quickly explore some new data that you have no idea what it looks like then pulling it into Excel and trying to explore what the shape of it is and things like that can sometimes take a lot of time, especially if it's a very large data set. Mm. And so in that case, you might be just faster feeding it to ChatGPT, letting it generate some things. Um, but it's, as you say, if you have some experience with Excel, you may be relatively fast with Excel anyway, and, and it might not, not might, might not be, be worth it. Um, but certainly if you need to do kind of any kind of data cleaning, like if you need to remove error rows with errors in them or remove certain categories, that might be something that might be a little bit more tricky to do with Excel, um, depending on the format of the data. And then it can be quite fast to use this um, data analysis tool. Sounds cool. Thanks so much, Josh. Unfortunately, okay. I have Thanks to jump out. No worries. Thanks, yeah. Bye. Have a Thank good day. You. Well, thanks so much, Josh. That was um that was a really nice introduction to coding in general. But um, I think personally, I would need to go again, like try again a couple of different things to see if it would run and how I can def how I could use it because I it, it, like this. I was so out of my element. It was really <laughs> nice just to see that. Oh my God, it's not that difficult. Like it's it's not, honestly it's not that hard if you read the prompts and everything it, it kind of makes sense so you yeah. can sort of understand um so right now i don't see any particular like specific use the one with data analysis was very interesting because i also work with a lot of reports so i don't know if it works if it would work with like other reports and stuff but i mean i i could see how i could use it just to um sort of work with data analysis but um but yeah that was it that, that's really that i think again the, the i think the the premium version of chat gpt is, uh, could be could be an interesting um investment for me at least to better understand the possibilities of 
what I can do with it. Um, mm -hmm. But as in, honestly, thank you so much for the introduction because you demystified something that oh, okay, I can do that. <laughs> I, I right. can go dive into it and, and read a bit more about it. So thank you very much for that. That's great. Happy to hear that. <laughs> Yeah. So with that, we can close it. And yeah, thanks for, for joining. Thank you so much for this. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Ciao.